welcome to this video. What I'm gonna be talking about in this video is a framework called BMAD. And I'm gonna be jumping behind the scenes and actually talking you through what this is and why this completely levels up your AI coding workflow. So traditional level one AI coding builders are tools like Lovable and V0. They're great tools. You can prototype relatively low complex applications on there pretty well. But as soon as you start to step up the complexity, you tend to hit some rabbit holes and some issues building more complicated apps. And so what I recommend for people who are trying to really build anything that's above that real core basic level of application is to dive into AI coding frameworks like the BMAD method. These are slightly slower in terms of development than tools like Lovable, but they actually end up being quicker because they're a hell of a lot more uh, efficient. The documentation process is much better and the, the actual agent process of building these applications is a lot more controlled and you actually understand what you're doing. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm first going to quickly show you through the BMAD method, what it is and how it works. And then I'm going to go across to an actual application and show you what it is in practice, paying specific attention to context in injection because the main benefit of this framework over tools like Lovable and V0 is being able to control the context injection and you can actually modify the configuration and even understand how the configuration works to tailor it to your application and configuring that context injection correctly is how we increase the accuracy of these AI coding methods and reduce hallucinations at the end of the day. So before I get to that, what is the BMO method? Now, you can, it's completely free and open source. You can come to the BMAD website on GitHub. I'm only going to cover this quickly because I've got a full blown 15 hour course where I basically build a complex internal tool using this framework uh, from start to finish. So I'm only going to touch on this briefly because I talk on this in that course, which you can either find on YouTube or in my community. Uh, but basically you install it. And then how it works is if we come across to the user guide here, this visually displays how it works. So we have two workflows. We have the planning workflow, which I've documented here. And then we have the development workflow or the development cycle, uh, which I've documented here. So the planning workflow happens before you start a project, or if you're using an existing project, which we call working in the brownfield, you still wanna generate these documents. Um, and these are the context layer for your app. So you'll find when you work with tools like Lovable, as the conversation gets longer, and you want to work on specific sections, you find yourself having to re-explain what the application actually does, what users it's targeted to, and a lot of the contextual information that you have to keep reusing to get accurate results. What this framework does is it builds you all of that context and you can continually use it as you develop. And we're going to touch on that when I actually jump into the editor, but this is basically building that documentation. So there's agents. Um, if you look at, so I'll show you in the GitHub. But basically, this is the BMAD framework. So when you install it, you're going to get this file. And it comes with a number of different folders. Now, one thing it comes with is, is a number of analysts. The people that built BMAD have a really good understanding of enterprise-grade development teams and how development works. And they've boiled it down to these key roles, which will sound very familiar. So first off, for the planning workflow, we've got analyst architect, and architect. Then we've got BMAD master, BMAD orchestrator, which to be honest, I don't use too much. Um, but then we have, these are the key roles. So we've got dev, project manager, product owner, QA engineer, scrum master, and UX expert. So all these different agents, they have a very different but important role. And this framework's given us like really, really good documentation to be able to build these agents. And then you can see down here, it's doing things like injecting templates and and uh, frameworks for how these agents operate. And as we actually go and use one of these agents, you'll see how that works in a bit more detail, but this is really, really well written. So what we do in the planning workflow, we use the analyst to do things like brainstorming, market research, competitor, create, creating project briefs. The, pro the project brief is I like to think of it as like the core document that the rest of your project is built on. It's got all sorts of things like overview, um, business use case, target users, all that kind of stuff. From there, the project manager creates the product requirements doc or the PRD, which is a slightly more technical version of the project brief. Then we have the UX expert builds front end specs. We have the architect that builds basically the database architecture and, and back end architecture. Then we, and then we have some other workflows just to kind of, I, I look at this as like you're using different agents in new context windows, which means new, you open a new chat and then run this agent. And I'll show you how all that works in a moment when I jump in there. But this is basically like getting a second and third pair of eyes on your scope um, and on your documents to catch any errors or any hallucinations that the 
the initial agent might have made. And it actually works really well. Um, and then basically, long story short, you've completed your initial documentation. And from there, you're then ready to jump into the dev cycle. So the way the dev cycle works, uh, at the end of the creation of the planning documents, you will get in your documents folder. So if you come down to your docs folder, you'll see that you get the PID, which looks something like this. And within your PID, you usually have what's called epics. Now, this project, this is a very, very basic Greenfield pro uh, Brownfield project, sorry. So the epics are not in here, but you'll find when you build it. And if you look at the course that I made, you'll see that I, w I go through five different epics. And the way it works is an epic is like a big piece of functionality. So that could be your authentication process, for example. And then within that, you've got a number of different stories, which are like much more broken down tasks within the epic. And so what happens is then when you're ready to begin the first story in that epic, you run this dev cycle. So the scrum master reviews the story and builds a, a story document. It drafts the story. And then what happens is you can kind of QA, run some second, second pair of eyes over that story. Again, you can run a third pair of eyes over that story from your product owner. And then if that's approved, you can have your dev basically go through and implement that story and all of the tasks within it, then validate the story. You can kind of QA it again once it's built and then you know verify it. And if it's all working, then we mark that story as correct or we create a QA gate. Um, and then we mark the story as done and move to the next one. And that's basically how that works. You keep iterating through each story. Now, that's just an overview. I don't want to focus on this too much because the main thing I want to talk about is why the BMAD method is so powerful and the context injection that takes place uh, because I've got other videos that kind of walk through how BMAD works in detail. So why is this so powerful? Let me spin up Claude code and show you how this actually works under the hood. Now, this is Claude's actual new update, which is really, really cool. But let me check what model I'm using because I might give... Uh, cool. Okay, we're using Sonnet 4.5, which came out yesterday. Now, what I'm going to do is if you click the slash, you'll see a lot of the commands that BMAD comes with. So you can see here we can run all of the agents straight from this command. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've, uh, I've already running it locally. And what this is, is just a little project that we're working on for an onboarding process to take data from the user. And I want to make a little change. So let's open the PM agent. And let's see what happens. So what will happen when you run that agent is it adopts the context of the agent. So if I come back to BMAD core, I go to agents and I go to the product project manager, you'll see here that this is all the commands that the agent has. Now you can see the agent's persona somewhere here. That's the agent's persona, name, John, ID, PM, product manager. And the agent has, this is all very concise context on where it can go to find key information. So you can see here that it's it's basically given this like, it's almost like a JSON structure, but a very, very methodical structure. I'm going, uh, this is who you are. This is all the, th these are all the templates and tools that you may need access to. And then it gives us this course. So let, let's go and let's create a Brownfield Epic. So let's go three. So it's going to execute the great Brownfield core. And as you can see, look what it's doing. It's reading specific templates that it's referred to in the documentation. So what I call this context injection. So what it's doing is it's injecting very, very specific documentation and context that helps it solve a problem or build templates. And this, this is it on a small scale, but imagine what happens when you have very, very clear documentation on your architecture. And if we open the architecture folder, we can see here we've got like database schema, data models, core workflows, components. These are all small MD documents with very specific context. And so if we're working, for example, on a front end feature, maybe let's say we're changing the color of a button, we we don't need to worry about what the database architecture looks like in that kind of scenario, but we do need to worry about what components exist in the application. Because if we're using a specific front end you know, UI framework, let's say, for example, Shad CN, we want to understand what components exist. Now, those components will be in the components folder. But if we have a really concise way of laying this out in an in an, a markdown file, which is which is this .md format, or this .yaml format, the AI agent can really, really easily understand the context and exactly what what it has access to. And so where where this is this is genuinely game changing is understanding how frameworks like this work, how these tools are set up. So if we come back to BMAD core, we, we, look at the, we look at the core configs, for example. So before starting anything, this is the initial injection. So it goes, before anything happens, 
First, it injects this context and it basically it mentions where key information is. So the AI agent knows where to search in your project folder structure for specific information. Then it reads the agent instructions, which gives it more relevant file structures and, and locations based on that agent. So product project managers, for example, they don't need to know like key developer related information. So they don't need to know about, let's say like edge functions and, and component libraries and hooks and all of that kind of stuff, but they do need access to the high level documentation. So they need access to like your docs folder, your PRD, your brief, that kind of key information. But then the dev agent, for example, this agent is going to be fed stories, which are like, it, it's going to have all of the the direction and all of the scope scoped out for the dev agent. So the dev agent doesn't really need to know the high level stuff, but they do need to know the specifics. They need to know the the actual, the, they need access to like the actual component libraries. They need access to your edge functions, your hooks, your, your backend infrastructure. So that kind of context could be down here in the tools for the dev agent. And so what's happening is we're building like control. You can think of these as really what it is, is controlled context. So instead of having one giant agent that just does everything in the platform with no instructions and no guardrails, we have a number of different agents. They all have their own specific role and they have very well-trained instructions that specify certain folders and context that, that they can access to increase the accuracy of the AI code that they're generating. And that is the real game changer about these BLAB frameworks. Now, keeping in mind, this is new technology. So these frameworks are new and a lot of developers are yet to adopt these kind of frameworks because of the fact that AI coding can hallucinate. So a lot of people see that and they go, oh, AI code is a waste of time. I'm just going to still code manually. And I think that the, the direction forward is people that recognize that AI code definitely has problems, but there's frameworks like this and correct context. In the, the models themselves are very good at writing code, but what's happening is most people are using them without correct and specific context injection. So the key to unlocking AI coding workflows that are actually quality is understanding how to inject, how to basically build agents that can inject just the right amount of context to give the, the, the AI agent that's working the correct context about what they need to know. So then it needs to narrow the scope down and then inject the correct amount of context so that the code being generated is, is actually correct and relevant to the project at both like a, a direction, high level direction, but also in that like low level story base environment. Now, what I'm going to do quickly is just show you what the epics and the stories actually look like so you understand what I'm talking about there. Looks good. So this is a separate project, but you can see here, this is Epic One. So Epic One is foundation and core infrastructure. Now, if we open the, the MD for this, you can see here that we've got the Epic, which is foundation and core infrastructure for a project. Within that, we have stories. So this one's like initialize the project, configure Superbase, implement authentication, build company settings, configure PWA, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the high level. And then what happens, and if we're following the dev workflow that happens here, the Scrum Master takes that epic from the, the PRD and it goes down and it builds actual story. So this is story 1.1, which is initialized the project. And you can see here what it's done is, this format is incredible, by the way. But what it's done is it's basically built like a really nice structured document, which is from the BMAD methods templates. So if we go to BMAD core, the agent has access to the templates. And so in the templates we've got down here, we've got the story template. So every time these stories, these are best practice templates. Like what you're seeing here, are really well thought out best practice templates, but it's broken the story down into like very, very specific tasks. And so what happens is we've planned out the, pro we used the project manager to high level explore the project and build an epic based on our project brief and our PRD, it goes, okay, this is what the end product needs to look like. So let's break that down into epics, which are like, you can think of it almost like milestones. Like what are the key things we need to get done? So we've injected the high level context to that project manager. Then what we've done is we've gone across to a scrum master and let, let's call it like medium level context injection. So we've given, we've given the scrum master, um, let, like and what, what I'll do is I'm going to run, I've already generated the code, but what I'm going to do here is go scrum. Master. Oh, this is a new UI. Wow. Okay. Okay. This came out literally yesterday. I've actually never used this Claudia interface before. 
I was using it directly in the terminal. But let's run the Scrum Master on. So if I run the Scrum Master, oh, this is crazy. Cool. So it's read, it's read the core config. Cool. And so what will happen is like the Scrum Master, I'm going to draft. So I'm just going to go three draft and then I'm going to specify Epic 1. Wow. Okay. It has some bugs in it. Um, now it might tell me an error about like you've already generated this Epic. So don't worry about it. But what I'm, I just want to show you how the context injection works. Because you'll see what it will do is it will inject relevant documents. So, okay, yeah, let's let's do 1.2. So let's go. Cool. So it's read coding standards. It's read source tree. Uh, and it's read the package.json. So coding standards and source tree. These are like specific markdown files. So if I open this file, you can see here that there's specific coding rules that we need to, we should follow every time we develop. So we're like building this specified agent. It's doing all of this controlled work. And then it, it basically drafts the story and we close this chat interface. So we close this context window, then we open a new window and we call that one the dev. So this is going to go ahead and build build the file. Now, if we look at the source tree, this is another one. So what it's done here is it's given the, it's injected in a very, very concise way. It's injected the entire source tree or file structure of our project. So again, very relevant information because this is going to prevent the agent from like creating duplicate functions or adding things in folders where it shouldn't be. It, it understands where everything is supposed to be uh, when it goes and creates new new files in the application. So like, this, this is the controlled context injection that is going to level up the AI coding game. Now, this is still in early days. So a lot of people haven't really come to this realization that the controlled way to code with AI in a, in a, a, a proper way is through this very controlled context injection. And you need an understanding of technology and an understanding of like your project and what is actually happening in each of these folders to, to be able to do this properly. But that all comes with time. And this BMAD framework will help you learn that. And it also documents things really, really well. So what will happen here? And then you could go ahead, like this is kind of created, story 1.1. So we say yes there. And then what we do is we close that window and we run the dev agent. So next up, we run the dev agent. That's going to take a different persona and inject different context from this kind of file structure. And you can see where I'm going with this. So the reason I wanted to make this video is because a lot of people are not aware of these AI coding frameworks and how they actually work because they haven't jumped in and played around with them. But once you jump in and play around with them, you're going to see the potential that these have. And in my opinion, this is the future of software development and coding is a combination of an understanding of AI, because I think to reject AI in 2025 is is honestly kind of silly. Uh, but it's also, it's we, we can't downplay the role of skilled software engineers and having an understanding of what you're actually doing. Uh, because at the end of the day, you still need to know what's actually happening in your project to build production grade apps. And this framework, the way it documents things out and explains things, is the logical step forward in doing that. So when you use other frameworks, which are super simple, and you just chat with an interface, you end up doing a lot of, building a lot of code that you don't actually understand. This is almost just as quick, uh, but it's also best practice. You'll see here that what happens is once you develop a story, we come down to the stories. Once you develop a story, you get this super solid documentation. The dev goes through and manually checks everything that is completed off. It updates the project structure and it even has like change logs and it records the files that is managed, what is modified, um, building proper QA gates, all that kind of stuff. It's best practice code development. And if you want to level up your AI coding, I highly, highly recommend looking into this BMAD framework, getting familiar with it. If you want to learn more about it, I've got a full 15 hours of me building in this exact framework in my community. You're welcome to check that out and just reach out because I'm honestly very, very interested to network with developers that are working with this BMAD framework and actually building quality applications because there's a lot of people out there that are not on board with this. And I think that's just because they haven't played around in here long enough. And they haven't seen what's possible. So check it out for yourself. Let me know how you go in the comments and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.